The Mountain Dew Pitch Black Match. <laughs> L.A. Knight versus Bray Wyatt. <laughs> so first of all, I think Bray took more time walking to the ring than Gunther spent actually competing in the Royal Rumble. The Pitch Black gimmick is they turn on the black lights and the ropes are like fluorescent green or luminescent green, whatever you call it, and L.A. Knight's gear glows. And uh, Bray Wyatt had he, he, he had face paint on. You can see when he came out, but it, when they turned the black lights on, that's when you really saw everything in his face and his beard and his eyes and the Mountain Dew logo on his shoulder. So it's a rave. To have no, a, you know what it was. It rave. was uh, you know Naomi. Naomi. Everything about Naomi returned except Naomi. That's what it was. Well, this was her exact same entrance. But Naomi never had a match this bad. Well, no, of course not. But and few have. No, very, very few. All right, and so, I'm not even sure how bad it was because you could barely see anything. So the rest, like, of the- they did a fucking spot where somebody did something off the barricade through a table, and like shit flies in the air that's all glowing in the dark. Yeah, and I'm like, you guys fucking did some spot off the off the barricade through a table onto a fucking chair or something like that in the dark. So so they attempted to do some sort of suplex, like one guy was on the stairs, the other guy was on a barricade, and one or both fell. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, then they go through the table. The table was stuffed with, like, glow-in-the-dark popcorn or something. Beanbag beans. Beanbag uh, beans. Is that what that was? Something. They're all huh. round. It wasn't popcorn. They were... They were f- Confetti or, or well, no, because when the lights nerds. turned back, when the lights turned back on, they were they were they were some weird color on the ground. Whatever they were, I don't know what it was. Fish bait, I don't care. <laughs> um, Could have been. So they fuck that. Uh, fuck the superplex up. And uh, my last portion of notes here reads: I stopped writing things down. Period. Sucks. Period. Bray won with a sister Abigail. Okay, now here's the uh, bullshit. Bray has won the match. After the match, he goes to the corner. And puts on a wacky mask that we can't see because it's dark. But the mask apparently makes him invulnerable to pain. Which begs the question. Why not put it on before the match? Mm. That is a good question. Yeah. If you're impervious to pain, mm-hmm. as a result very of very hard mask, to defeat a man in a wrestling match. Why do you put it on pain? after the mask? So. After the match. Uh, so. And I got a better question for you, Vinny. Uh, even though that's the obvious question. Why did he put another mask on? I don't know. Like, why? I don't know. Because it's spooky shit. He's doing spooky shit. It's lore. Shit. I mean, it was. It is definitely lore. It's lore. So there was a kendo stick in this match. They found like a rave orange kendo stick, which you see all the time. And, a uh, lightsaber. Sure, sure. They should have edited sound effects. That would have made it so much better. So L.A. Knight has the lightsaber, and he's like whacking uh brain the head with it and then you see like bending over his head what's kind of sticks do and uh, it doesn't hurt him he's in previous pain so now ellie knight is scurred he's scurred and so he's trying to like flee through the crowd but he's being stalked by bray wyatt and 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 bray wyatt with this mask on is two things uh he he's uh like a jason four he used to never runs and then even if he wanted to run he's still really fat and he can't run and i'm looking at uh ellie knight is like rip man great shape this guy does cardio for days abs everywhere if bray wyatt can't out or excuse me, if, uh, if ellie knight can't outrun bray wyatt he deserves whatever happened to him <laughs> well he couldn't outrun him bro he couldn't outrun him no. so uh ellie and some do that mask bray wyatt uh stalks him to a crash pad there's a crash pad in the back and uh he stalks him there and ellie knight can't flee he's helpless another fucking thing he can do and so bray mandible claws him to death Lays him out in the pad, and uh, the crash, pa- crash pad is apparently in like a city block because there's buildings up there. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And uh, Uncle Howdy appears. It's fucking Uncle Howdy. And he jumps. <laughs> he certainly did. He leaped off a high thing, and he missed L.A. Knight by a fucking mile. Clearly. And then shit blew up everywhere, uh-huh. and it was over. There were puppets. I laughed. There were? There were fucking puppets. I missed the fucking puppets. They're up and on. Yeah, up where wow. he jumped from. Yeah. I laughed and laughed at this fucking stupid ass spot, and I laughed. This was absolute horseshit. And you know what? Listen, I've seen some bad WWE booking, but it has been a long time since I have outright compared anything they've done to World Championship Wrestling. But man, this fucking Bray White Uncle Howdy shit is WCW. Because do you watch all of this? 
Uh, no. Okay. I've, yes. I've been, I, I, I'm in and out on it. On and out? Yeah. You All I'm watching Ron Smackdown, yes. Okay, so if you watch Ron Smackdown like Sean and I, first, like, Bray would return, and this fucking Uncle Howdy would appear on the screen, and it was clearly Bray, right? Then, one day, Bray and uh, L.A. Knight are in the ring, and Uncle Howdy comes out on the ramp. So now they tell us, well, they're not the same guy. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. I, I, That's right. Yes. So then they did another angle where uh, where Uncle Howdy attacked and beat up and beat the shit out of Bray Wyatt. I recall that, yes. Right? Yeah. So he's his enemy. Am I wrong? Even I saw that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then they did another show, and Bray did a promo, and he said, I am Uncle Howdy. Huh? That's what he said, right, Sean? Uh, there is, yes, he yeah. said, I am Uncle Howdy. He said it tonight. And then, and then on SmackDown, on SmackDown, they do one more back and forth before this match, and Uncle Howdy shows up and starts dancing in the fucking cheap seats. And Bray just kind of nods, like, yep, motherfucker, he's coming too. So now they're on the same side? So they're the same guy, they're a different guy, they're enemies, they're friends, and they certainly appear to be friends on this fucking show. Were they not? It's a mystery, Ryan. You know what it is? It's bullshit. Let it it's be a mystery. It's fucking horrible, it's stupid, it doesn't make any sense, it's nonsensical, <laughs> and it sucks. Wow. We went back and watched the entire run of Nitro, and I'm honestly not sure... There was any one specific element as bad as the Uncle Howdy saga. Now the shows as a whole were much worse because it was two hours, three hours of this crap. But I'm not sure any one thing Nitro ever did was as bad as Uncle Howdy. Uh, I wouldn't say that because they had that under the the Warrior in the Mirror Hulk, horrible, all that shit. You know what? You know what does remind me of WCW? It's so fucking dumb. I laugh. I laugh I at how fucking dumb it is. Well, so at least it's at least it's got I'm that. Glad it brings you some joy. Yeah. Kind of like Thunder. Which was worse than Nitro. Thunder was worse, but it was funny bad. Yes. Yeah. I feel bad for uh, Louisiana Knight because he was really <laughs> starting to like get over, I yeah. guess, on SmackDown and Raw with his, yeah! Like the crowd was getting along with him and loving it, and I feel bad for him. Geek of the Week! Yeah. You know, Knight. you know what's funny about LA Knight, though, is he was never supposed to get over at all with his No! Thing. He was just supposed to be the first geek killed, but... He did everything he could yes. to like make it work, and he did do a fantastic job. But too bad, buddy. What a depressing story. Your job yeah. was to die at the hands of Bray White in a fucking neon light match. And I hope he doesn't become like a <laughs> zombie along with the. Oh my god. I hope he becomes. La uh, Knight has the buzzer. Been, him yeah. and Alex are gonna get it on later. La Knight has been getting essentially the same character over for like a decade now. We're working with the same character over for like a decade or more. Various promotions. NXT, TNA, finally gets he gets called up. And they make him the mo head of the model thing, and he gets free of that. And it's peaking. It's all coming together. All the work is worth it. And now he is beaten by Uncle Howdy and exploded. What do you think of this match, Mark? Now, you see, you guys have known me long enough that you know that I'm a real fan of nonsense. Yes. Esther, you, you may know. like this, actually. So, like... Nonsense is fine. Like, all this nonsense. Like, it, it's like, so I have been keeping up a little bit with Bray Wyatt since he came back. You know, I talked about earlier with you, Vinny, about how angry I was when he first came back. And they fucked up the light cue for when he blew out the the, the lantern. He went back and they turned the light yes. out before he went forward. Yes. Which is, how do you fuck that up anyway? And then, like... It just it just dragged on with him being like, ah, I'm not so happy, thank you guys. And then, oh, but I'm mad. But I'm a bad guy. But I'm gonna get you. And then oh, but thank you so much. I'm oh, I'm gonna get you. Uh, so they did that for fucking ever. And then Uncle Howdy is wandering around and doing whatever that is. But anyway, so like Bray Wyatt is supposed to be like a myth, like a you know like an Undertaker esque mythical character. Ooh, I'm spooky. Um, Bray Wyatt gets fired, comes back. His first match ever, and this is where my problem lies, his first match ever is a gimmick match sponsored by Mountain Dew. Like, yeah, when The Undertaker got injured and went away, he never came back and they were like, The Undertaker's coming back and doing a Fago pineapple casket match. You know? 
Like he's doing the Dr. Pepper hell in a cell. You know, that never fucking happened because that would be fucking idiotic. That would be really, really stupid. So when I saw that this was a Mountain Dew themed match, like I was like, what are they going to, like, are they going to drink Mountain, like, is that the, the they're going to drink Mountain Dew and see who can hold the burp the longest? Like, what is this? Why are you putting this mythical, scary man in a fucking commercial? Why is this happening? So that was my main problem with the, the, re the all the bullshit, the, the fucking, you know, rave lighting with, you know, anybody, like, I mean, really anybody in the crowd who had a little stain on their pants, their date's going to see that. That's oh, no good. You don't want to you know, you see that when you're out. But, you know, like, otherwise, like, it was a stupid match. It wasn't very good. Poor L.A. Knight, you know, uh, the, uh, I think he was the man behind L.A. Gear back in the 80s. Um, <laughs> and that's where he, right, that's that's he gets his namesake. Uh, but, yeah, it was a really stupid match. And then Uncle Howdy came out in that fucking trench coat and just... Yahooed right down on nothing. He sure did. He leaped. And you know what? You know what? I don't give a fuck where this goes next. I'm so uninvested at this point. Wow. And I think everyone else probably is too because they drugged this fucking shit out for so that motherfucker came back in October. October. His first match is in the end of January, Brian. Are you fucking kidding me? Everybody's been waiting for this motherfucker to come back and do some spooky ass shit. And they wait until fucking January to put him in a soda match. A fucking soda match, Brian. Get the fuck out of here. It's the dumbest fucking thing I've seen in such a fucking... Like, it's dumber than the time Brock Lesnar wasn't in the Money in the Bank ladder match and won the Money in the La Bank ladder match. It's dumber than that. It's dumber than every Royal Rumble where, like, somebody's pushing somebody over and then the other somebody else stops them from pushing somebody over. It's dumber than all the dumb shit they do. Well, my only argument is after I watch this match, I wish they had held it off longer. <laughs> like forever? Yeah. yeah. Like maybe next Royal Rumble, perhaps? Here is some actual commentary from Bastion Burger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Burger demanded hot dogs. <laughs> Were they was... delivered in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We are told Razor and Zanetti have called. It's a big wiener. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brian. Big, juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you broke Vinny. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.